Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're looking at a range of different methods we can use to create rebar. So if you don't know what rebar is, it's the metal structures that you typically add to concrete to make it stronger, and they've got this interesting helical curve shape around the central metal part. And they're really nice if you're making damaged buildings or terrain and things like that. But they're also a really fun example of the way you can do things in different ways in Blender. A really good example of equifinality. If you don't know, equifinality is doing different things to end up at the same result. I think it's most commonly used in geology, but anyway. So what we're going to do is just go through a couple of different ways of making rebar in Blender, and we'll just talk through them really quickly, and you can decide which method you think is best. And also, if I've missed anything out, you can tell me and come up with some more methods and we'll see you can come up with the most. So I've started with a circle here and it's not particularly dense in terms of the vertices. We could do more with this, but it'll be fine for our demonstration. Let's select those vertices and then let's just E to extrude those out on the Y to somewhere maybe about there. And then we're just going to X and delete out those vertices. We're going to actually use this for a couple of things. So let's just shift and D and bring that off to the side. And we're going to start with our first method, and that is to use a nice easy modifier, which is the screw modifier. So let's bring the screw modifier in. It makes this unholy mess because we haven't actually added in our screw where we add in some height. So there we go. That is our screw modifier. Now this is looking pretty ugly, so let's shade this auto smooth, which is going to make it look a little bit better. And then if we want multiples of these, because we need lots of these going up, all we're going to do is add another modifier, so let's add in an array, and then we want to have 0 in the X, 1 in the Z, and then we can increase this as much as we want, and we've got our rebar. So that's our first method. Easy. Second method, similar idea, let's shift and D, bring this over to the side, and this time in edit mode, let's just extrude this up in the Z axis to somewhere about there, and we're basically going to do exactly the same thing, but using a different modifier. And you'll notice this worked best when going from a 2D shape. This works better in 3D. So we're going to add a modifier. We want a simple to form, and we're going to use the twist. We want it in the z-axis, and we're going to do this about 360. But you're going to notice that this goes absolutely horribly, because we need to add some geometry to this. Let's hide that, go into vertex mode, or whichever mode, Control and R, and add in a load of edge loops. Click once we're ready, and then do the same thing again. Let's make this visible, and now you can see this is working much better, and we can drag this round to a max of 360, making sure it's on the z-axis. And then once again, an array modifier will finish this off, adding in as many sections as we want, not on the x-axis, on the z-axis instead. But you can see this is basically exactly the same thing, though I will say this one doesn't look quite as smooth, but we can, if we want to, add in some more iterations on our screw modifier. We've got 16, let's up this to 32, and suddenly it looks way smoother. So either of these, both perfectly acceptable techniques, both giving us this nice helical shape. Let's just add one more on that to give this overall shape. Right, let's just G and Y these over to the side, and we'll look at some slightly different methods now. So the first one is I'm going to Shift and A, and I'm going to bring in a cylinder. And then what we'll do is go into vertex mode, select those top vertices, and then let's just G and Z that up so we've got something however long, so something like this. Then we're going to add in a different shape. So this is going to be different shapes combined, and what I'm going to do is add in a curve and I want to get in a curved spiral. Now, I don't think this is there in the basic curves. You need to go to Edit Preferences, Get Extensions, and type in Curve, and you want Extra Curve Objects. Click Install, it will be there, and then make sure on your add-ons that that's activated as well. So Extra, and then just make sure that the Extra Curved Objects is ticked. Shift and A, Curve, and then, as I said, we want this curved spiral. I'm just going to use an Archimedean one. I'm not sure it would really matter here. Now, importantly, this will come in as the same width as our cylinder because we didn't change anything. You can see our radius there of 1. But say we had a wider cylinder, you might need to make this wider. I'm just going to put this back to 1. And then we can change the height of this by doing that. Okay, And that means that we get some really nice control over how wide or far apart we want these to be and then we can have more turns. So I can keep adding this until I get 
the number that I want. So in this instance, we want that. Actually, that is pretty much perfect. But like I said, we can change our height if we want to, to come and fiddle around with that. Once we've got that, we've got 24 steps. I'm going to up that to 32 again. So we're getting more vertices there, so it's going to look smoother. Come out of that so it's confirmed. And we've got here our object data properties. And I can just go down to where it says geometry. And I want to add in a bevel. So let's come and have a look at this and what it's doing. So I'm going to increase the depth of this somewhere there. The moment we've got the resolution as 4, we go all the way down to 0 if we wanted to, which will make it more square. And you'll notice that there's a slight issue with this in that we've got this flat bit facing us here, but the pointed bit there. For that, we need to change our twist method. At the moment, it's on minimum. I think we want this one, so Z up. And then you'll notice that it's giving us the same edge pointing out each way. We could also, if we come back to our geometry, add in an extrusion to make that wider or thinner if we choose to. I'm just going through things that might be useful in other situations. Or we could offset that to make that a bit wider. Let's put up that resolution a bit to make it round. If you want a little bit of sort of a curve inwards. This is probably more useful if you want that. Let's just increase that offset. If you want to do something like a spring wrapped round a cylinder. But let's bring that back down so it's like our rebar. So there we go. We've got another one. And we can change the size of that to make that a bit bigger. So there we go. Another way of making our rebar. Last two I can think of off the top of my head. And again, we're going to start with a cylinder. Let's just up this to 64 so it's a little bit more rounded. And once again, go into vertex mode, select those top vertices, and then up that to our given height. Now, at the moment, all of these are relatively non-destructive. We can keep modifying things about them should we choose to. I mean, at least certain bits. So, for example, here we've got our screw. We can change that to make them more compressed or less compressed. And we've got our count to change the number in the array. This one is slightly less editable, so maybe not quite as useful, but there's still a lot we can do with this. Now, this one is going to be very uneditable, but I really like it as a technique. And this is the only one that uses a paid for add on. Let's go into face mode. And we're just going to select those faces and I'm going to right click and we're going to use machine tools and we're going to add a thread and we get this thread here. Now we've got all of these options. We can increase the amount of threads that we've got. I think there is probably about right. We can change the size of these threads. Let's go to somewhere about there and we can change other things like how far in and out the end point so this is the end point goes we don't really want to change that importantly we do need to change the thickness though so that is changed with this one and we can change the width of the crest but this one will change the width of the part connected to our cylinder so we're getting this here now i really like the control this gives in terms of we can still fill around with a number of threads if we want to I'm going to make this a little bit thinner and I don't want it to stick out as far. So somewhere about there. No, definitely need more threads than that. Let's go to somewhere like here. So I quite like this as an option. I think it makes a really nice looking rebar relatively quickly. It's probably a bit better because of the angularity of it being something like a drill or something similar. But it is definitely an option and from a distance it looks great and it's very, very quick to do. Whereas in our screw method or our twist method, we get a little bit more control later on. And yeah, there's positives and negatives to all of that. Now, our last method that I wanted to talk to, I think is quite a fun one. And what I'm going to do here is shift an A and bring in any sort of curve. So I'm going to go for a Bezier curve. Let's go into edit mode and let's just, I don't know, G that up to somewhere here. Let's R to rotate it round. Let's S to scale it up. And then we'll do something with this one here. Let's R and Y, put that up there. And yeah, that will do for now. So anyway, we've got a curve. And for this one, we're going to use geometry nodes. In fact, actually, let's just make this way longer and somewhere up there. So there we go. So we've got a curved curve. But we could do this straight if we want to. And once again, I'm going to up the resolution to something like 32. And we're going to move up here. And we're going to go into our geometry node editor. We want a new geometry node for this. That's A and full stop to zoom in on it. So let's N to give us some more space. 
and we're going to turn this into our rebar. Now, being that this is a curve, what we can actually do is turn it to a mesh. So I'm going to type in curve to mesh, plug that in here, and this is going to allow us to create something with a profile. And we've still got this profile left over here, which is going to be the profile that we want. Let's just pin this in. Now, what I'd really love to do is just drag this in. But the problem is, is this is a mesh and this only works off of a profile curve. So we're going to have a problem with that. Let's just shift an A and mesh to curve, which is kind of weird because we're going backwards and forwards on this. But either way, we can now pin this in and we get our profile just here. So we've got this looking kind of nearly there. But we need to twist it around in a similar way to what we've done over here. And we can do that very easily with geometry nodes. We just need to set the curve tilt. Let's bring that in there. There we go. And then we just rotate this around. And oh, look, this is not working in the slightest because everything's twisting. How annoying. What we need to do is tell it to curve as we move along. Not everything because otherwise the whole thing just twists around. So what we need to do for this is tell it to not just use a value here, but to basically curve it more and more and more as you move up this curve. And thankfully, we have some information for that. We call these curves splines, and we've got this as what we call a parameter. So if I type in spline, we've got spline parameter here, and it has a factor. So if I bring that factor into tilt, you can see that it's doing more as it goes up. We just need to multiply this. So we need to do some maths to make this more extreme. Let's just make it so we can see this. So you can see it curved around there. And then all we need to do is bring in a math node. So maths in there. Add, we'll just add to everything. We want to multiply it. And let's increase that value. And there we go. We get our twist. Perfect. Now, this isn't looking great. I think I need some more resolution on here. So let's come to our object data properties. We could actually do this within the geometry node. We could resample the curve here to make it smoother. So that's one option. Or the other option is we do that in our object data properties and change this resolution to, let's say, 128, making it way smoother. And we can change this value to up or down our twist. What's nice about this method is it's already as a curve. So if I want something that's got some flex in it, or I want to extrude this longer, you'll notice it just gets longer every single time. So E, and we're longer. Now the problem with that is that this then changes what our spline length is. So we're going to have to increase this value to get that looking good again. But it's really, really easy to manipulate. So I really like this as a technique. Oh, I just realized, I think there's one more actually. So what I'm gonna do is find this curve. So here, Shift and D, Y, bring that over here. And then let's just delete out this geometry node. So we don't want that. We're just gonna use the same curve. And actually there is another way we can do this too. And what we're gonna do is let's grab this one, Shift and D, bring that over. And we're just gonna get rid of this array. So what we could do is just array this along the curve to get the flex. That's really easy to do. All I need to do is make sure it's in the same place. I'm going to do this the quick cheaty way because I'm lazy and I've got machine tools, so why not? So alternate to do that. And actually, for this, we want an array. I'm actually going to shift and D and drag these across because I'm going to show a different method as well. This is effectively the same thing as this. In fact, let's just delete that out. Shift and D, bring that across. Alternate to align those. And all we're going to do is to make the curve bring in a curve modifier. So curve modifier here, bring that in. We're gonna select this curve. It's gonna go really messy. We're gonna change this to the Z axis and it goes all the way up there, which is fine. And we're just gonna G and Z that along until we get to the point where it's sort of at the beginning. And we can up our array if we want to. So let's, oh no, want to be the other end for that, sorry. So let's bring that there. And then we can just up our array as much as we want to add to this. So let's put our count up. The other thing we can do, if we don't want to do this, we don't want to go, oh, I want to add to my curve. And then I extrude this. And now this is a pain because I have to do that again. And actually, it hasn't added any length to it. What we can do instead of using our fixed count is to just do fit curve. And then we can click this curve. And it's automatically the right length. And if I ever come to my curve, there it is. Go into edit mode and let's say extrude that along. 
it just adds to that curve length. So it does it all for us. So that's really handy. So that's one option. And really, that's the same as this. It's just adding in a curve modifier to it. We could do exactly the same thing with our screw modifier, though we don't have this option to do it by curve length here. We'd have to do that manually. Although I put an array on this. Why did I put an array on this? You can do it with an array. You've also got iterations here, so you can just do it multiple times there and not use multiple arrays. But with that, you don't have the array, so you can't do this. Not sure why I did that in the first place. But if you want to do that curve, use an array. Then finally, we've got our last method. This is a really nice method because we don't have to fiddle around with getting the mesh in the right place because they need to have the origin of both the curve and the mesh in the same place. With what we're going to do here, we don't need to bother with that. And that is to use a tool that's nothing really to do with making rebar, but it is a great manipulator of curves. And that is a tool called Cable Rater. I've got a number of videos on Cable Rater. It is a paid for add-on, but it does cool things. I'm gonna press Shift, Alt, and C. Notice I've got my cable selected and I've Shift selected my little section of rebar here. Shift, Alt, and C. And we're just gonna convert curve to mesh cable. Click there and it's done. And basically that's just done our work for us, except for we haven't had to fiddle around with where everything goes. It's automatically set up the array. It's basically done exactly the same thing but it's done everything for us. So it's like the lazy man's way of doing this and we can just do it in one click. And it does loads of things as well. But if you're not really interested in making lots of cables, then probably just use the free method. I wouldn't be buying this just to do this technique. So there we go. We've got a nice number of different methods to make rebar. I don't think any one of them is better than the other. They are just different options, but I would be interested in hearing if you've got a method you prefer, but I would be very interested in hearing if you've got a method I haven't covered. Let's see how many different methods of making rebar we can get. I just want to add one final caveat to this before anyone complains or grumbles about it. And that is to mention that rebar isn't actually really these helical curves that go around it. It's not created in that way. They're just different ridges. But realistically, this is probably the way that you're most likely to create this, especially for something like 3D printing or rendering, where creating it perfectly isn't a problem. And we just want something that's going to work and give the right appearance from a given angle. And if you do want to have a look at the different methods of making rebar or what I've done here, so you can critique them as much as you want or see which one you like or don't like with having to do them yourself, this file is going to be uploaded to the Patreon, which as well as subscribing or liking this video is another way you can help support the channel. Have a great day, guys.